Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week two of my 2023 reads. This week was another wonderful reading week to start off my year, and this time filled with quite a few really great picture books. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. This is Hibbert's newest romance release, except this time it is YA, and I was so pleased about this. I actually ended up buddy reading this with Rachel at Kalanadi, who I will link below. Both of us had our loans from the library come in at the same time, and we're both huge Hibbert fans, and so we read this, and I was just so impressed by this. I loved actually all of the YA aspects of it. It focuses so much on that coming of age story as well as the romance, and it's got her humor. It's got these great personal growth arcs for the characters. Um, the hero in this deals with OCD, and so mental health is like a real big storyline in this, and it's just so much fun. Um, the storyline basically, by the way, is that there's these two teenagers, Celine and Brad, who used to be best friends when they were kids, and then and they ended up kind of having a falling out when Brad wanted to be kind of a uh, part of the popular kids group and Celine who is a huge conspiracy theorist and like loves to be weird was like no I'm not in for that and they just kind of fell out and really resented each other for that because they used to be such close friends but then right before you know they're about to graduate from high school um, they are both applying to this scholarship program that includes kind of a wilderness survival thing in the woods and they have to work together and come together and it's just so sweet i absolutely loved this i gave this five out of five stars and i will have a standalone review for this up later this week then on audiobook, I listened to We Crossed a Bridge and It Trembled by Wendy Perlman with quite a few different narrators, so I've got them listed below. And this is basically a collection of oral histories of the Syrian Civil War. And so it's just interviews that the author did with all kinds of different Syrian people about their experiences from during the kind of Assad regime to when the protests started to when the government started attacking his people to sort of the refugee crisis. So it's got voices um, from all of these different periods. Some of these are short, just a sentence or two. Some of them are longer, a couple of pages. People sharing their stories. Um, and this book for sure deserves a review. However, it is a Harper Collins book. So if you've been listening to people who've been talking about this, you're probably already aware. Um, but the Harper Collins union is currently on strike. Um, they're just kind of trying to fight for more living wages, that kind of basic uh, rights that employees should have. Um, and Harper Collins isn't negotiating with them. So they're on strike and they've asked reviewers to not review Harper Collins books. So I will not review this book. Um, but you know, if you want to go ahead and support the union, I will put a link in the description box below where you can do that uh, because definitely we should support unions. Then I read a few picture books that were just so much fun, starting with What's the Rush by Yi Ting Li. So this is a story about two friends, a turtle and a rabbit, who have very different approaches to life. Um, the turtle is constantly, you know, getting distracted and taking its time and doing all these things, and the rabbit just wants to get going and get things accomplished. Um, and so it's about their friendship when they try to go on a hike up a mountain together and how that works out. It's got adorable illustrations and it's really funny and it's got this nice rhythm that a lot of kind of oral storytelling as well as kids picture books have that I think is just so much fun I know little kids love that kind of rhythm when they read and just even as an adult I think it's a lot of fun so yeah I loved this story I thought it was really fun and I gave it five out of five stars then I read Where We Come From by Diane Wilson, Sun Young Shin, Shannon Gibney, and John Coy, illustrated by Dion MBD. So this is a picture book that is also sort of, um, I think this is a little bit inverse, and it is all of these authors who are from different backgrounds coming together and writing almost histories if that makes sense talking about where you come from and it starts by talking about how we all come from the stars but then it talks for each of them about where their ancestors are from and where they've grown up and these like really um you know ancestral histories type of thing and it because each of the authors comes from a different background it provides a really interesting contrast um for all of their different experiences the illustrations in this are absolutely lovely just 
really, really beautiful illustrations. And I think that it comes together in such a beautiful form of a picture book. So yeah, this was fantastic and really lovely and moving, and I gave it five out of five stars. And lastly, I read Kapaya Mahu by Hinalea Moana Wang Kalu, Dean Hammer, and Joe Wilson, illustrated by Daniel Sosa. So this is a picture book that I heard about from Adri at Perpetual Pages, who I will link below. And I think it's maybe actually a picture book adaptation of a short movie that was made, um, but I've just read the picture book and the picture book is fantastic. So this is, I would say, a history um, that is talking about one of the really important stories in Hawaiian lore, which is about these um, four kind of healers who came to Hawaii and helped uh, heal people. And these healers were mahu, so sort of um, neither male nor female, but some sort of uh, different gender. Um, and the, there were some rocks that were put in place as sort of a commemoration of these healers who came. Um, and this is the story of that kind of legend, but also the story of what happened to those rocks, to that monument, um, because that exists in Hawaii today, but has been sort of forgotten and sidelined, especially probably because the mahu were, you know, non-binary. And it's just like beautifully illustrated. I loved the way that this story was told. And it's this story of the history of a people that has been sort of forgotten and reviving that. Oh, and it's also bilingual. So it is told in one of the Hawaiian dialects um, with the kind of English translation below. So yeah, this is a fantastic picture book and I gave it five out of five stars. Okay, so that is everything that I read this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, you wanna chat with them, or if you're also having a great start to your reading year and wanna share some of your favorites with me, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.